Hey guys, hey guys day, 11. day 11. First thing I did was move the van before first light out of the Yellowstone dorm parking lot and into the no overnight public parking lot so that my very hungry batteries could get fed the energy of the sun that they so crave. And then I took a little nap with earplugs and I felt my stomach rumbling so I started the butane stove up and heated my pan with the nonstick spray. Mmm, this looks good. This was about $10 from Walmart if I remember correctly. Oh man, I don't have the right cookware so it's going to take me an hour to cook this breakfast. 30 minutes for the rice, 30 minutes for the meat. Alright, hurry up, let's get this water boiling, I'm really hungry. Oh man, I see a cloud rolling in. Looks like the weather app was wrong. Oh wait, that's just my side window fogging up from the boiling water. Since this breakfast is gonna take forever, let's multitask. Here's my number two bucket. I use two trash bags, because if there's just one, I notice there's some condensation from the heat. And that's just pretty gross. Never can be too safe when it comes to this stuff. I also use some bungee cords around the bucket to keep the bags from falling in. When there's a <clears throat> weight added to the bags. Ah, okay, looks like the meat's done. I swear, this is the meat that I just cooked, not from the bucket. Oh man, I wish I had a pot to boil this in. I could cook the meat and the rice at the same time, but I gotta make sure there's good ventilation in here. I notice if I don't get it ventilated, I'll get a little bit of a headache. I can definitely notice it. Always gotta ventilate when cooking. And ah, here we go, the finished product. No plates because that's just more dishes to wash. I don't need that. But let's put this hot water to good use. I haven't had a good double edged razor shave since I started this trip because the hot water is a must if you ask me. Gotta get that shaving cream to froth up. Ah, the key ingredient, hot water. Get it nice and warm and let that metal heat up. I'm not going for a two pass close shave. Let's just go for something rough. We'll just go with the grain on this. Under the chin, the side of the neck. These are the hardest spots for me. I often get some razor burn here. Oh man, it feels so good to get that stubble off my face. Ah, another tricky area. The thick mustache hair. I always have to go from the side on this area. Gotta get right under the nose. Gotta just use the edge of the blade to get right up in the nostril area. And finally, the second pass on the mustache is downward to make sure we got everything. Man, what a great shave! I feel a lot cleaner. Turns out I can only eat half of this family size portion, so I'm gonna use that trick that Cycle Cruises showed and use a Ziploc to store the leftovers. I'll reheat it later. I've got some wool socks and they're great, but my feet get sweaty and they just get damp. I try to wash my feet daily in a shower, but while I'm on the road, uh, if I can't get that shower, then I'll use baby wipes and paper towels to clean my feet. I just wish I had some baby powder to suck up this excess moisture. But ah, I remember, I bought this waterless shampoo a while back and I never used it. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Let me give it a try. I'll spray it on this left foot and compare it later. But what I found is that it made no difference by the end of the day and it even made my left foot probably feel a little bit worse. Total fail. Now that I got my feet situation all sorted out, let's put on some boots and go to the lookout point for Old Faithful. Man, isn't that a great view? Look at all those people watching this eruption. Now let's check out some other hot springs. Here's one named Solitude. Oh crap, I got the sulfur smoke in my face. I breathed a little bit in. Oh, my throat is sore now. Now that is one furious geyser. I think that's actually the name of it too. And here, this must be its two furious cousins. Wow, this one has brilliant colors from all the bacteria. Looks like you could slip and fall in there and cook faster than my breakfast from this morning. It's warm enough being right here by the hot springs. Even this bison agrees. I'm trying to ask this bison to pose in a picture with me, but he's not having it. Oh, and what's this? Oh, just a coyote with a gangsta limp. Maybe he got into a fight with those grizzlies from yesterday. Ah, so here's the visitor center that was closed when I arrived yesterday. Oh cool, here's a sticker. I can add that to my new Reflectix window panel of stickers of places I've been. 
This will be number uno. Here's a quick look at all the exhibits. Some kind of interesting things in here. But the feet I mentioned earlier are just too tired and I, they need a rest. It's probably enough walking around for me. I think I'm going to get back on the road. But before I do, let me quickly check out this snack shop. I bet everything in here is going to be overpriced. Whoa, no. $10 for a double burger, fries and a coffee? Not too bad. The burger tastes so dry though. I'm going to need a lot of ketchup for this. It's, it tastes freezer burned. Here's some yurts. I know my brother likes this. He wants to build a yurt in his backyard. Uh oh, we got the Asian tour buses. The locusts are feeding. It can be really quiet an attraction and then all of a sudden three blue buses filled with Asians arrive and all of a sudden it's like a busy season in Yellowstone again. This looks just like Hawaii. Really strong winds here. Man, I counted 11 hats. Good thing I had the sense to clip my hats in my belt. Well, back on the road. Oops, looks like this guy did something stupid. Ah, uh, now what do we have here? Looks like a bison crossing. Yeah, take your time, buddy. I'm on vacation, I got a camera, I got all day. Any idea why did the bison cross the road? He doesn't seem very motivated to get to the other side. Wow, awesome, I'm getting to see all these different types of wildlife. Looks like we got some elk now. Now that's some nice water. I'd like to bathe in it. Hey, that's a good idea. Let me pull over to the service road where I can get some privacy and take a shower. Oh, that feels good. My personal batteries are recharged. It's getting kind of dark. I think it's time to stop at a campsite. Wait, what? You want me to pay $30 so I can park my van and you don't even have any plugins? Nah, no thank you. I'm out of here. I'm going to drive out to the west side of Yellowstone and try to stealth camp outside of one of the hotel parking lots. Like a civilized van dweller. But wait, what the heck is going on here? Stopped taillights for as far as I can see. Uh, must be another bison crossing. I'll just pull over to the side of the road here, take a nap until the bison use their crosswalk. I love having the bed on wheels. Ah, finally, I've arrived someplace familiar. McDonald's. I know I can get some internet here. But I won't be actually purchasing anything at McDonald's, not with $5 McMuffins. Dang. Since I got this internet access, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to sync a couple podcasts and download a few YouTube playlists as MP3s, you know? So I can listen to them on the road trip. Ah, oh, man, it's so slow. At this rate, I'm going to be here the entire night. Why does T-Mobile suck so bad out here? Maybe if I download this cell tower app, it'll direct me to the closest cell tower. I can drive to it, and maybe I'll get a faster speed. Damn, that still didn't work. I guess the only thing I can do now is stealth camp outside of some hotel and then play this hide and seek game for internet tomorrow. Thanks for watching my video, guys. If you liked it, please consider donating to my Patreon account so that I can become the next nomadic fanatic of the van dwelling world. Tune back in tomorrow or check out my Day 12 video.